Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about something, uh, we're going to change tax a little bit here, I'm going to show you guys some code I built um, for different versions of gradient descent. So this function you're seeing here plotted, this is the Rastrigan function in two dimensions. Um, and you can see tons of local minima here along these little grids. But it turns out that its global minimum is actually at the origin and its functional value is negative 10 at the origin. And then you can generalize this to any dimension and its global minimum will be at the origin and it will be negative 10. So this is a nice um, sort of test case for, for n dimensions for optimization. And the other thing when you're looking at this plot, the first guess that we're taking is here at 2, 3 and it's always going to be in purple. And then the last guess is going to be in pure red here. And then between them, you can see the directionality of the iteration by how it would interpolate according to the rainbow. So the first one will be purple, and then over time it'll start to turn blue and green and yellow and orange and then finally red. Um, so that's how you should read it to, in terms of directionality of where the convergence is happening. So here I'm looking at backtracking line search, and I call this one Goldilocks because we can see that we actually hit the global, global minimum here at the origin. Um, and then if I play with the Armijo parameter, this one I call lenient, it's a more lenient parameter, and uh, we see that it, it also converges. But then if I make, um, this one is the most stringent one I, I placed, and we can see here we get stuck at the um, local minimum. Then this is exact line search, also gets stuck at the uh, at a local minimum right where we started. And then this is stochastic gradient descent. So we can see that we bounce around more than the previous case uh, with, uh, without the stochastic term, but we do actually end up hitting uh, the global minimum as well. And then if I increase the amount of stochasticity here, uh, the reason why you're not seeing the contours is because I only drew the contours in the box negative 10 to 10, whereas this really bounces a around a lot. I really set it very high. But you can see here that we're bouncing all the way out to 300, 300 roughly. But the way I program this is, and this is typically how you want to do it, you want to decrease the stochastic terms magnitude over iteration number because you should expect convergence as you iterate and so you don't want to just keep bouncing around a ton so you want to explore the search space more with, with by increasing the stochasticity but not too, you don't want to keep that there forever otherwise you're just essentially just randomly guessing if it's too big and so we can really see the color here so the radius you can see decreases um, over time with color um, and then eventually we hone in on the global minimum of zero zero and then this one yeah, I set the stochastic term so small to where um, it's basically just without stochastic and we saw earlier that that, that ended up uh, converging uh, but the reason why I call this one Goldilocks even though it took longer to converge is if we look at the 3D Rastrigan function which I did not implement a visualization of um, because I couldn't draw the level curves and the um, points at the same time. It would just get too complicated. So here on the right, this is um, the small version of the stochastic gradient descent. And we see that we're pretty far away, after a thousand iterations, we're pretty far away from the global, min uh, yeah, the global minimum of negative 10. And we can also see that the actual point that we're guessing is quite far away. Whereas here with the Goldilocks one, these are the same parameters run just in the 3D version of Rastrigan. We get very close to negative 10, and we also get very close to the global minimum of the origin, because this is 10 to the minus 5. So this is just to show you guys that playing with the parameters makes a big difference in the, in the optimization. So it depends on the function you're, you're trying to, uh, to optimize here. And then the last thing I'll show you guys is a GitHub page I made for demos like this in the future if I decide to do these. Um, so you can go to this GitHub page here at my GitHub. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so it's it's this, uh, this GitHub page and then you go to uh, Gradient Descent and 
I didn't give you guys the complete code. So 90, 90 to 95% of the code is there, but I went ahead and commented out key parts of it that, that sort of test the, your understanding of, of the previous videos. Um, so for example, here I tell you to implement what does it mean to do the Armijo condition? Uh, what does it mean to violate the Armijo condition? And if we violate it, um, how do we actually do the quote unquote backtracking and so on? Um, and then this GD test, gradient descent test, I have you implement what is the Rastrigan function and I'll include uh, a link to that in, um, in the comments to the, to the um, uh, YouTube video. And just as a caveat, or just as a note here, I chose Rastrigan because you can, to implement its, to implement it in any dimension, n dimensions, that and its gradient, you can do it in one line and it works for any dimension. If you know uh, sort of Python notation relatively well, it, you can do it in NumPy. Uh, so think NumPy, you can do that in, in one, uh, one line. And then if you want to change the dimension, all you have to do then, if you do these first lines three and four correctly, um, all you have to do is increase the dimension of this X naught here. And it will, uh, it will um, automatically switch the dimensions. Everything should just work. Um, and then last thing um, I'll leave in the future, if I do other codes like this, I'll leave in a youtube.txt file in the associated folder, which um, YouTube videos to, to look at for, for context of, of the, um, the code. So I hope you guys play with the code and, and hopefully get something out of it. Um, and I hope to see you in the next video.